Call the meeting to order. We'll uh, do a Pledge of Allegiance in a moment. Silence of our troops as well as our first responders. Chuck, would you like to do that for us today? Yes, sir. Okay, we're good. Thank you. <clears throat> now, next item is oath of office, a deputy city clerk. Is that going to be you today? Can you please take care of that with uh, Mr. Bostwick, please? Hi. Okay, can you please raise your right hand? I, Charles F. Bostwick, do solemnly affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, Small that I will bear true allegiance, excuse me, I that will I will bear, bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. Okay, subscribe and sworn before me this 27th day of July 2021. Thank you. I got a picture for you, sir. Okay, thank you. And uh, we're glad you're part of our, our team here. Okay, as uh, Deputy City Clerk, can we have the uh, roll call, please? Okay, roll call. Chair Hoffbauer? Here. Member Carrillo? Here. Member McLaren Gomez? Here. Member Bostwick? Here. And Member uh, Knibble? I'm here on Zoom. Okay, and we just let the record show that they've, uh, they're both remoting in, Mr. Carrillo and Ms. Knipple. <clears throat> Item number five, approval of the minutes of the public meeting held July 13th, 2021. Uh, the staff report is, suggests a, a motion to approve the meeting minutes. So moved. Have, uh, so Kathy moved. McLaren has made a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Diane Knipple. Second. Roll call vote, please. Chair Hoffauer? Aye. Uh, Chair Bostwick? Aye. Chair McLaren Gomez? Aye. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Member. <laughs> Member uh, Knipple? Yes. And Member Carrillo? Yes. Thank you. Okay, I think there's a little lag there with Mr. Curio's uh, connection all the way out there. Uh, can I get an approval for an amended resolution of EIFD PFA 2021-001 to elect the vice chair? This was the process by which the vice chair could uh, delegate her position on an as-needed basis. Staff, you have a report on this? Or is that it? Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, so just uh, uh, based on the, the last meeting, um, the, there was a motion in the second to appoint a vice chair to, to be one of the representatives from uh, Supervisor Barger's appointees or designee. Um, based on that, um, uh, originally Anish was going to be serving in that capacity, um, but uh, the, the supervisor has since appointed Chuck to serve in that role. So uh, the recommendation would be um, under that designation to appoint Chuck as the vice chair. Uh, okay, so that would actually be vice chair pro tem, correct? Because it's not always a vice chair because she's technically the vice chair, right? She still stays a vice chair, 
Yes. Right. He's, he does it yes. on a pro tem basis. Correct. Okay, do I have a motion along those lines or any comment from the Dr. board? Thompson, please step check Boswick as vice chair pro tem. Excellent. So, Diane Campbell. And a second by Mr. Carrillo. Any other comments by the board? Motion. Is a motion and a second? Uh, roll okay. call vote, please. Chair Hoffbauer? Aye. Vice Chair Bostwick? Aye. Uh, Member Creo? Aye. Member McLaren Gomez? Aye. And Member uh, Knippel? Yes. Okay, item number seven is uh, is present the uh, Palmdale EIF fee infrastructure financing plan draft to the public and property owners. And uh, this would be, uh, this would, um, it's the next step in the process. Uh, Luis, you want to brief us on that, please, sir? Uh, yes, sir. So uh, we have uh, Felicia Williams and uh, Brian Moncrie from Cosmont Companies that will be joining us uh, via Zoom. Uh, we'll be going through the presentation, uh, very similar to what was presented uh, yes or last at the last meeting. Uh, Felicia, can you uh, can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear and see me? Yep. And you should be able to share your screen um, to go through that presentation. Okay. Can you see the uh, presentation? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. It's nice to see the Palmdale team uh, again at the second meeting out of five public meetings that we will have regarding the Enhanced Infrastructure Financing District. My name is Felicia Williams. I'm a senior vice president with Cosmot Companies, which has been helping the city of Palmdale with this Enhanced Infrastructure Financing District formation. So first, uh, the public should have received uh, a notice in the mail with a link to the infrastructure financing plan and a little bit of an explanation of what an EIF fee is and the process that the city will go through. And this presentation will provide an overview of that uh, so that at the next public hearings, we can hear feedback from the public uh, as they go through this process with us. So what is an EIF fee? First of all, California policy uh, in 1952, the voters approved Proposition 18, which allowed for a type of financing called tax increment financing. And if you can see uh, at the graph on the right, tax increment financing allows local governments to finance public improvements using property tax revenue from new development. So this is increased property tax revenue from development that is happening or planned in the city. So very important, this is not a new or increased tax. It is actually the increase that comes from new development and the value of new development that goes into a separate fund and that is used to fund infrastructure that then helps support the development in the surrounding areas. The Enhanced Infrastructure, infrastructure Financing District is a type of tax increment financing. And there's the government code, the section that authorizes it. And it basically allows funds generated in specific areas of Palmdale that need infrastructure to be reinvested in those areas uh, to uh, achieve the infrastructure goals for that area. We will see a list of infrastructure that Luis will present in the middle of the presentation. So what types of projects can EIEF fees fund? As you can see, there are a lot of familiar projects here that would be needed in the city of Palmdale, parks and open space, civic infrastructure, transit related projects. A lot of different things can be funded by tax increment. And just a reminder, this is all public infrastructure. This is not private infrastructure that goes onto the development side. This is all infrastructure and streets and roads and sewers that benefit the public. So there are several EIFDs in the county of Los Angeles. We wanted to highlight a couple of them here so you have an idea of what they are spending their money on. And just a reminder, this is, as you can tell from the composition of the board, this is the city and the county opting in to contribute their tax increment into this special fund. And what's unique about EIFDs is that only taxing entities that pass a resolution can contribute property tax into this fund. So there are many taxing entities like sewers, mosquito abatement, et cetera, um, but only if they pass a resolution will they contribute their property tax revenues 
uh, to this fund, and that right now is the City of Palmdale and the County of Los Angeles. So the City of Laverne has, uh, has a new gold line station, actually the L line is the new name for it, coming into the city. And so they passed uh, an EIFD in 2017, and then the LA, LA County joined as a partner in 2020 to generate funds to put in some improvements to access the station, some affordable housing, water and sewer utilities, and other sustainable projects. Another EIFD example is the city of Redondo Beach that has a power plant that is being retired soon, and they are working with the county jointly to try to create some regional park amenities on that site. Uh, West Carson is uh, the county only that's located in unincorporated county, and that was to uh, have some improvements and affordable housing surrounding Harbor UCLA facilities and some new uh, jobs that are going into those facilities. So now I will turn it over to Luis, who will go over the different areas of the EIFD, the various boundaries. And there's a larger map of this on the EIFD website, which we'll get to, but I'll turn it over to Luis to go over the, uh, the boundaries. Thanks, Felicia. Um, and just before I get into this part of it, I know we have some people uh, here. Um, we are going to be taking public comments. If you guys feel like you are wanting to check in, there are comment cards on the table there. We just ask that you fill them out. That way we can keep track and do any follow-up that staff may need to do after the meeting as well. Um, back to the presentation. So uh, there's three general areas uh, of the city that are going to be proposed to be included as part of the EIFD. Uh, area A is what's being called the Aerospace Corridor, which is primarily the area around uh, U.S. Air Force Plant 42. Area B is what we're designating as the commercial uh, centers area. Uh, it's a little spread out, uh, but it, it includes most of the, the area around the future Palmdale Transit Area Specific Plan, High Speed Rail, uh, uh, Express um, Brightline, um, High Desert Corridor, uh, and other projects along that freeway corridor, along with a portion of um, Four Corners uh, there off of 47th Street East uh, and Pier Blossom Highway. Uh, the last one is the, the Los Colinas areas, um, That's which is, includes primarily the area of Anna Verde and Ritter Ranch, uh, we, knowing that we need a, a, there needs to be a big emphasis in housing um, to accommodate our future growth here, um, and obviously there being a large need for that. Next slide. So as part of this uh, process, we, uh, we work with the county to try and identify high priority infrastructure projects where we can in invest in putting in some of this uh, backbone infrastructure in areas that have been primarily undeveloped or underdeveloped over, over the years. Um, and that's the list that's being presented as part of this uh, initial phase one and two of the projects. By no means does this mean that these are the only projects that will be funded. Uh, obviously we had to do some forecasting to try to understand what based on the future tax incremented, in, increment created in these areas uh, with new development, the kind of funding that we would have to fund these projects, and that's where this $176 million uh, project list came from. Um, again, you'll notice a lot of the area is, is investing in utilities uh, and infrastructure like sewer, water line extension, uh, drainage, um, some road improvements, um, and areas where, again, where uh, there's a lot of growth for uh, potential for growth um, and to support our, our aerospace industry and, and the areas around plant 42 uh, help create opportunities for new housing um, in in palmdale and, and the, the surrounding area um, and then just really focusing on large-scale projects that um, uh, would make a lot of sense like the uh, rancho vista overgrade um, overpass grade separation project and the avenue m uh, overgrade or overpass uh, grade separation projects as well. So again, these are just a preliminary list of uh, projects that we anticipate would happen over the next 20 years, uh, but by no means are we limited. Um, if additional funds are available, additional projects can be done. The dollar amounts that you see there as well are uh, estimates based on today's, uh, today's dollars. Obviously, whenever these projects happen, there might be some changes there. Uh, but just in terms of priorities, these are where um, um, staff in, in collaboration with the county and our consultants felt we can get the biggest bang for our buck. Uh, next slide. Thank you, back to you, Felicia. Thank you, Luis. 
So the Public Financing Authority, which is the board that's meeting today, is uh, created as a local public agency that is subject to the Brown Act. It is the governing board of the EIFB, and so we will be conducting the public meetings and public hearings that are required as part of the EIFB process. And the membership, as you can see, is two members from the city council, one member of the county board of supervisors and a designee, and uh, two members of the public. They drive the preparation, circulation, and adoption of the infrastructure financing plan that you should have received the link to in the mail with the notice. And there is also, as Luis mentioned, there's a list of infrastructure pro um, projects on the slide before. And the infrastructure, infrastructure financing plan is a living document. So it will be reviewed and audited each year to see if there are changes that are needed uh, as the plan progresses on. So there will be chances for the public to uh, comment on the various types of projects. Uh, if there are going to be bonds issued by the public fi by the uh, EIFB, the Public Financing Authority would also, also have to approve that through a public meeting. And uh, the bylaws were adopted at the last meeting, which governs um, a couple of different areas in terms of the officers, the supervisor designation, and then the terms of the members. So the EIFD has uh, a high level of community outreach associated with it. So this is the first uh, sort of public meeting after the public has had a chance to access the infrastructure financing plan and various details about the EIFD. And we will be back three more times for public hearings to receive input from the public. And those meetings are tentatively scheduled for September 7th, October 12th, and November 16th. There's also an EIFD website that is set up that includes key documents, uh, meeting updates and agendas, uh, various notices, and there's also a place to leave feedback on the EIFD if you have questions or you have comments in between the meetings. So that is the link to the website uh, below. And what we decided to do, there's a, more, uh, a longer list of frequently asked questions on the website. But just some of the basic questions, will this increase my taxes? And the answer is no. Because the establishment of the EIFD will not result in a new tax or a new fee to the property owners that are located in the uh, EIFD boundaries. Uh, will it cause more development? It will create infrastructure that can support new development, but most of that development has already been identified in the various plans that have been approved by the city, including the general plan update that is going through the process right now. Um, and how can I provide input? You can do that through the website. You can also email the city and you can also call the city at the numbers below. So with that, I will go ahead and end the presentation and turn it over to questions from the PFA board or from the public. Thank you so much. Thank you. The FAQs. Is it this slide? There in the county. As a court in the course of that reassesses it, this just merely makes sure that any changes in the assessment stay local and don't go to the county and the state. Correct. That way the, in general. Uh, so the the property tax would go to the city or the county. Right. Because uh, it's only the county or the city's portion. Uh, but what this does is that the city of Palmdale is contributing property tax but he's also getting a portion of the county's property tax, which you normally would not get because the county has agreed to contribute a portion of their property tax. Right. That, that was why we had the county as a partner on this. Yes, exactly. Okay, because they have some areas out there that they're looking, some of the older neighborhoods that never annexed, that uh, they've got some fairly significant infrastructure improvements in them. So, 
and, and you're right, uh, Chair uh, uh, Hoffauer, th that would mean that all that money that's generated from both the county and the city would stay here locally. Stays local, okay. And then um, uh, on the development question, um, the reason these areas were picked is because that's where the stuff has already been approved, but it's basically sitting on a back burner to try to get it to pencil out, correct? There's a yeah, couple so facts. Go, go ahead, ahead. Alicia. So, yes, these areas are, are positioned for development, but what's preventing some of the development is a lack of infrastructure. So you're absolutely right that this is a way to create a process to invest in that infrastructure to allow some of this development that's been planned to occur. Excellent. Okay, uh, let me go down the board here. Kathy, do you have anything that you want to ask at this time? No questions for me. Okay, Mr. Boswick? No questions for me. Uh, Ms. Knippel? Uh, nothing for me, thank you. Mr. Carrillo? I do have a couple of uh, clarifications. This uh, area that are going to be benefited by bringing the infrastructure, I fully understand the intention of uh, keeping the money locally within the city and the county. But at what percentage is that going to be uh, allocated? Will it be 50-50 or the county still gets a higher percentage on this increment? So Louise, who's going to answer? Okay. Oh. <laughs> so I'll go back to the slide that has the projections. Uh, the answer is that, in general, the city receives less than the county uh, does uh, in general. So. Um, the county receives, I believe, and I'm trying to remember the numbers here, the county, um, the city receives 17 cents on the dollar of property tax revenue, and about 24 cents goes to the county. So what um, they are contributing here is the city is contributing its full 17 cents, and the county is contributing 17 cents as well, which, is, as you can calculate, is not the full amount of their property tax, but they're contributing right. quite a big portion of their property tax. Did that answer Excuse your question, me. sir? No. So 17 cents to the city and 17 cents from the county to the city. Can you clarify that? So 17 cents uh, is coming from the city into the property tax fund, and then 17 okay. cents comes from the county as well into that property tax fund for a total of 34 cents. Okay, okay, guys. So the, the next question is uh, regarding to the infrastructure. So these areas will bring the infrastructure, say, sewer, for example. Uh, I believe that there is a 10-year provision for other properties where if they connect to that new sewer line within 10 years, they are subject to paying their allocation for the cost of the infrastructure. Is this the same model or is it different? So that's a pro rata share question. Uh, so normally, when if you bring in like a sewer line uh, that you want to extend down two miles, yeah. somebody in the middle hooks yeah. up to it. They they pay for a piece. So is that, is that still going to apply right. here? I, I think we'll have to look into the specifics. I, I, we understand that traditionally the first you know first one in ends up taking the brunt of the cost, and that's why that was designed right. so they can recoup some of those costs. I don't necessarily know if that would be the case here because it's this EI, uh, this uh, EIFDs that's paying for this infrastructure. It would be very similar if, um, like, the city were to extend a sewer line or like a water line right. uh, to to an area. But we, we can definitely look into it. Yeah, Cosmon, do you have any input on that? We don't have any input to connect to the sewer. Would still be the property owner's responsibility. Um, but in terms of the allocation of the cost of that sewer, um, that would have to be sort of determined later. And so I think that's a follow-up question. Okay, let's make sure we put that on a list of things to Absolutely. look Absolutely, and, and trust yeah. us, if there's an opportunity for us to recoup some of those costs and so that we yes. can reinvest in other projects, it's definitely something we'll look at. Right. Okay. Um, Chair, I do have one question as a result of um, Juan's cr uh, question. So I was a little confused. So I heard 17 uh, cents on the dollar for the city, and then you had mentioned 24 cents on the dollar from the county. And then the next comment was both at 17 cents. So I'm a little confused. So the county receives 24 cents total, and they are contributing about 75 percent of that, which is 17 cents. Got it. They're not that, contributing their full amount. Great. Thank you. Good question. Yeah, great. These are good questions. Mr. Carrillo, anything else, sir? No, no, sir. I only two uh, clarifications I have. Thank you. Good question, sir. Thank you, Diane. Okay. Um, Deputy City Clerk, do we have any speaker cards? 
you want to bring those up? Okay, so now is the time for public comment. If you would like to comment, you can fill out a speaker card and bring that on up. You have just one, one, one speaker today? Yeah, make sure you leave that here so they can get back hold of you, okay? Okay. Your name, please? Good afternoon, I'm Jacqueline Luna. I live in the area of Q7 and Q3 on Sumac Avenue. I'm actually going to speak in both uh, Spanish. Can you make sure her mic is oh. on? I can hardly hear. Oh, okay. I'm Jacqueline Luna. So I live in uh, uh, Sumac Avenue in Q7 and Q3. Right. I'm actually going to speak in both Spanish and English. Uh, so just bear with me. <laughs> uh, so Jacqueline Luna, uh, vivo en la calle Sumac. You've got three minutes, so oh, use entre, it wisely. Vivo en la calle Sumac. Uh, varias personas aquí en el público están participando porque recibieron una carta donde habla sobre el tren. So a lot of Spanish speakers are here today in the uh, meeting because we received a letter that talks about the high-speed rail train. It was in English. Um, yeah, so that's a different topic on a different day. Uh, okay. Um, is there any way that that could be translated? And that's, I, a, that's great. They all, the, all this stuff should be, and I don't know why that wasn't. That clearly was an oversight. Uh, can we make sure that, that we get a hold of her and any of those people, make sure that they get them and we create the opportunity for that to be distributed as well? Absolutely. That, yeah, that's, that's not acceptable. Okay, uh, how much time do I have left? No, you have a couple minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my second comment was I noticed you have some plans for the parks infrastructure. Um, I live by Desert Sands. Entonces, yo vivo al lado del parque Desert Sands. Cuando llevo a mi hijo, no hay sombra. So when I take my son there, uh, there's no shade. I have to drive up to another park that has shade. Um, a lot of, I, I'm lucky to drive. A lot of people in the community don't drive. So can shade be added to the parks? Yeah. Um, so you're talking about like over the playground? Over the playground, yeah. yeah. Your, your neighbors tore it down. Oh. It was there. So yeah. I think that we're looking at, we have some trees that we're looking at. Bring it in. Uh, and I don't know if that's going to Desert Sands as well, but there's so, some trees that are coming from another site. That might be some place to consider. So, so just to clarify, that's uh, a city project right, right not now. Part of this. Not, part of not a part of this, but it's um, definitely yeah. something that we can... So in future uh, plants, there'll be shade um, for the parks, yeah, in that area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's a big concern because it's hot. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your time. Great questions. Thanks. So. And Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, may I, may I chime in on that? Yes, sir. Uh, how's the, is the speaker still on or is she left? No, she's here. She's in present, sir. She's here. Okay. So I want to uh, address her in Spanish. And basically, I'm just going to let her know that I, I, um, I do speak Spanish and she can talk to me, with, contact me with any other concerns. I want to start with the number of Juan Carrillo, the concejal de la ciudad de Palmeo. Obviamente hablo español, si tiene usted cualquier pregunta, uh, puede uh, contactarse conmigo y yo uh, muy, muy seriamente lo voy a, a platicar con usted acerca de estos problemas que tiene, ¿ok? Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me... Okay. Okay, I thought I just asked her to contact me. Uh, if you wanted to do any, any, any further conversations on this issue. Okay, you have a little bit so let's see this spacio. Here's my card, okay? There you go. There you go. We'll, we'll make sure to connect her uh, with you if she yeah. has any questions. And we got career. probably most of the staff speak Spanish here, too, so. Do we have any other Thank speakers? Do we have any other speakers in the audience? Anybody, whether you have a comment, a question? And if you're on the phone, if you are attending by phone, you can please press not star nine and raise your hand. Can you make sure you fill out that card so she's got it? Okay, what's up? Hello, my name is Ruby Cervantes, and I live in the area Plan B. Uh-huh. Um, so that means that we're going to have to move out? No. 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 Okay. Nope. That was my only concern. <laughs> That not, like... <laughs> that's, not, that's not what this is about. It's not like the old days, which is what killed redevelopment, was they come in and they kick a bunch of people out and gentrify right. the area, and then you know, then you got no place to go. But oftentimes it's financially good for people too. Right. So, right. But no, that's uh, that's not the idea. The idea is the infrastructure needs to be enhanced. It's either missing or it needs to be improved. No, I totally to either. Agree. 
keep up with what's going on there, replace something that's old, or allow something new, you know, like, you go, for a great example is 10th Street West. Mm -hmm. 10th Street West and 47th Street East both have the exact same problem. They either have water and no sewer or sewer and no water. And you can't build anything without those two guys, you know. So this is the type of tools we can use to help that situation. Okay. That's why it looks like the world ends, you know, at certain points. <laughs> right. Like, how come they didn't do anything here? Yes. So, okay. Thank okay. you so much. You bet. And uh, Chair Hopper, just so everybody knows as well, and for everyone that's here, um, you will continue to receive the notice for the next public hearings as well. Um, this is just part of the formation process and one of the requirements, as Felicia mentioned in her, in her uh, presentation. Uh, so, uh, again, it, it doesn't impact your house necessarily. There's no additional taxes to your property. This is just part of the formation process in terms of us reaching out to those that are in these designated areas that um, the city is going to be, in, in partnership with the county, contributing uh, to fund these projects out of the funds that we will get in the future. Okay, anybody else? Okay, so yes, we do have some um, public comments online, so okay. I am going to start with ABAC and allow uh, them to speak. Okay, you may go ahead, ABAC. What's the speaker's name? It's uh, the Antelope Valley East Kern Water uh, Agency. Oh, ABEC? Okay. We, do we have a speaker from ABEC uh, on the line? Yes, we do. Okay, maybe you want to turn off one of those devices because all we're getting is a big echo. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Try to do that. Try to do that. Okay, why don't you work on that? We'll take the next speaker and then you can work on that. Who was next? And then we'll come back to AVEC. We'll let them figure that out. Somebody's probably got a phone or something in the room with that at the same time. Okay, our next speaker um, has the last three digits, 201, in their uh, phone. I'm going to allow them to talk. Okay, speaker with the phone number ending in 201. What is, what's the code you hit on there to talk? Any code? Or you just unmute them? I just unmuted Okay, staff has unmuted you. Speaker with the phone number ending in 201. If you're like me, you probably don't remember your phone number. Uh, speaker, uh, or I'm sorry, um, caller uh, with the last t uh, number 201, please accept or hit star six. Maybe hit star six. There you go. There we go. Go ahead. Okay. This is uh, this Dwayne Chisholm with ABEC. I'm the general manager. And uh, wanted to address the, the board there. Um, we uh, sent a letter which you've, uh, uh, through the presentation, is, is pretty well satisfied uh, most of our concerns that were contained within the letter. However, uh, I do want to uh, suggest that as you go through your infrastructure planning and processes, that you uh, consult ABIC because we have some uh, uh, water infrastructure in these areas and uh, also we have plans for expansions of various items and certainly would want to coordinate those efforts so that we can um, uh, provide that uh, infrastructure to the public in a, in a very coordinated uh, fashion. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, AVEC has always been a great partner, and uh, well, we appreciate that comment. Luis, do we have anything else to follow up from staff's end? No, I just said we would be happy to follow up with Dwayne and set up a meeting to kind of go through some of those things. Great. You good, Dwayne? Muted himself. You gotta love. You gotta love Zoom, huh? Okay. And okay. Uh, who was the other uh, party from AVEC that was on, or, or was that it? Maybe. Maybe that was the same feed. Probably. It's probably the same feed. Yeah. Let's check. Okay. Let me ask. Avec, do you want to um, unmute yourself? And Was there another speaker over at Avec or identifying as Avec? Because we all identify as something. I guess he's done. Nope, I guess that must have been it. Okay, okay so we do have a, another speaker online, uh, Mike. Mike, star six, to, to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, we got you. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I just have a general question in regards to having your S uh, 
uh, after the you know on the west side of the freeway. Why don't we have any lighting on that area? It's a long stretch of uh, darkness all the time at night, and it's very dangerous. I know maybe it's not related to this topic that you guys are talking about, but that's why I said I have a general question. If somebody can answer that, I really appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I think that's out of the scope of this meeting, and uh, the city attorney is going to sit there and give me a dirty look if we talk too much about stuff that's not related to the topic, but it's a great question. I have the uh, director of planning and our economic development staff all here, and they're writing those notes down furiously. And uh, if you can uh, email me, Mike, uh, yes. go on the city website, email me, and we'll make sure we get somebody back in contact with you. Okay, sir? Okay. Thank you very great, much. Great. Thanks. Thanks for a great question. Good. Okay, Deputy City Clerk or IT, you have anybody else for us? Yes, so we do have Ruby who submitted a speaker form. Would you like to come up? Sure. There, Ruby? Oh, she was the other one. That oh, okay. okay, great. So we do we have any other public speakers in the audience? Public comments? Okay. Sure. Okay, go right ahead. You gonna want to bring him down here with you? And just while they come up, just for the record, uh, we did receive the letter from AVAC. Right. Uh, everybody did uh, should have received a copy of it. And that's in the public record. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. And make sure we get his name so they can follow back up with him. Okay. okay thank All you. right. Uh, Jacqueline Luna again. This is going to be a general comment, general question from ¿cómo es su nombre? Daniel Molina. From Daniel Molina. Um, Mucho gusto. Okay. ¿Cuál, ¿Cuál es su pregunta? Eh, eh, la, mi, mi pregunta es, ahí en la calle donde yo vivo, en Summer Avenue, uh, los carros pasan muy rápido y uh, tengo unos nietecitos. Cars y, are driving too fast on Sumac. Yeah. Yeah. Ajá. Uh -huh. yeah. Entonces ese es el problema que tenemos, que no tenemos, no podemos... A veces va saliendo uno a la calle manejando y sabe, pasan los carros muy rápido. Ese es el problema más que, que tenemos ahí en esa área. Especialmente la suma que entre suma y Avenida 3. What's your, what's your Q, Q7 and Q7. Avenida 2. Okay. Yes. So, make sure he puts a, his phone number on there. We'll have traffic or the traffic deputy get back to him on that, okay? Okay. Because that's kind of outside of this, but we'll have somebody get back to him. Sí, so, o si, te vamos a dejar un número de teléfono. Uh, deja su número de teléfono donde podemos hablar uh, para hablar de eso. Porque eso no es necesariamente es para este. Okay. Pero la okay. ciudad es algo que la ciudad va a uh, poder, poder ayudar con eso. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's right, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your help, ma'am. You guys just come to watch us, or? Come on down, sir. Make sure we get your name so they can follow up with you, okay? You sound like you're doing good. Just try to get through that screen with your voice. Welcome. Um, I'm sorry, could we have the mic on, please? Yeah, talk over. Okay. Yeah, yeah. El problema que tenemos es más de tres meses que nos han descontinuado el correo por problemas de perros, pero a uh, toda la cuadra yo vivo en la 38649, la tercera street. Um, what he's saying is that we live on the... Correo. Um, we have... So, we don't have any mail. Like, we don't get our mail uh, because, like, due to problems because of dogs. And we haven't been getting our mail some weeks. And okay. for three months so, we haven't been getting again, our... again, we're working on public financing here. But that's, that's a common problem. And if you talk to these guys over here... Déjame su número de teléfono. Y podemos... No es algo que la ciudad hace, pero te podemos ir a conectar con el um, correo para tratar de okay. resolver ese, ese problema. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure we connect, yeah. okay, and see if we can get a solution to it. Yeah, es... Yes, okay. Llena la forma, por favor, y okay. de, nos dejas así para que podamos hablar yeah. después. Everything. Anybody else? I knew I could draw you out. Come on down. Yeah. <laughs> 
that your interpreter for you? <laughs> Hi, welcome. Thank you. Uh, some of the advantages of working from home because of COVID is you can bring your son to work once in a while. There you go. Yes, sir. Your name for the record? My name is Bob Barjam. Logan, Bar Logan Barjam. Welcome. So um, what I have interpreted is that with the developments that have been outlined, the future developments, of course that's uh, future homes and uh, commercial, that... Uh, and industrial. And industrial. Right. So uh, with that, the city is going to uh, allocate 17% uh, of the taxes that they would get when those projects are built and the uh, owners pay their tax bills. They're going to take 17% and dedicate it to these develop these enhancement projects for infrastructure as an example. Does that net a deficit for the city? Yeah. It's these tax increment things are kind of wonky. So uh, picture you know it's like yeah uh, as a general rule uh, you have to have something to start with. So quite often those are bonds. You'll sell bonds or you'll take part of your general fund or something like that and put that money forward towards a project area. When that project area develops and it gets reassessed and you saw that graph with the, that big in incline on it, that extra above the base that was there is what ends up coming back to the agency. And that's what you use to pay off those bonds or repay the general fund for that and then invest in future projects. So that's, it, it, you, it's, it gets kind of wonky but that's the that's the three thousand foot level. Yeah, Would you? If I, if I could help and make sure that we're on the same page. Um, sorry, I'm on Zoom today. It's not seventeen percent of the tax base. It's seventeen cents on the dollar. So it's not right. really seventeen. Yes. Is that not seventeen yeah. percent? Yeah, I get it. Um, thank you. Um, so, if someone lives just outside the boundary of one of the boundaries, could we say that they're tax, their ad valorem tax is exactly the same. Simply, if you're on the inside of the boundary, some of your funds go to the uh, infrastructure. But there's not a higher, there's no higher tax rate for yeah, I'm going to let, let Cosmon, who's the brilliant person here, uh, to uh, we know those guys, they're all brilliant guys and ladies over there. So you want to you take that? Sure, thank you, Chair, and, and we, you have a very informed public. That's a really good question. So, um, and you're absolutely right. If somebody lives on one side of the boundary and a person lives on the other side of the boundary, their ad valorem tax is exactly the same. Uh, the difference is if you're in the boundary, that money is allocated by the county tax assessor into a separate fund that pays for infrastructure. And, and like the Chair said, uh, this would be money that goes to the general fund, but when you use it for infrastructure, you then increase money later that goes to the general fund because the development that has been stalled a little bit is allowed to happen. So maybe you give up a little money at the beginning, but then over time you make that money back um, and the fiscal impact for this is actually positive uh, over time for the EIFD. But you do have to start it somehow. Very good, thank you. Great, did I answer your question? Yes, sir. That's why we have them. Everybody else okay? I have a motion to close the public hearing. All right. Chair Hoffauer. All right, do we need a second? Do we have a motion to close? Uh, okay. Yeah, Chuck, Chuck, and then, um, and then Mr. Carrillo a second, okay? All right. Chair Hoffauer. Aye. Vice Chair Bostwick. Aye. Member McLaren Gomez. Member Carrillo? Yes. And Member Knipple? Yes. Thank you. Okay. We're going to adjourn now, but what I want to remind everybody in the audience, we have some of the brightest minds on this topic, mostly on Zoom, uh, and then you have us. And we're here to bridge that gap on a lot of these questions and issues for you. If you have questions, problems, uh, stuff is going to come up, you're going to leave and you go, oh, why didn't I ask this when I was there? It'll all come up. Feel free 
were easy enough to find. Uh, Luis brought a stack of his business cards, I'm sure. I have a few if anybody else wants one. Or easy to find on our, our email. Uh, we're, we're, all re we're all real easy to find. Um, so feel free to uh, find any one of us and we can uh, uh, you know, get an answer to your question. We may not know it, but that's why we have consultants like the Cosmont Company on board who helped write the law that we're now able to access to make things better for people in our community. So, okay, um, any closing comments, Mr. Carrillo, before we go? No, I'm good, thank you. Thank you, sir. Diane? Um, you can always ask a question through the website as well. Yes. Um, good option, so thank you. There you go. Kathy? I'm good. Mr. Boswick, Mr. Vice Chair? I'm good. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll stand adjourned until September 7th at 3.30 this spot. Thank you very much for all being here. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Here we go.